Hi guys, so today's video is about the HP T620 Plus Thin Client. In a previous video I had shown you guys what one of these machines looks like inside. And since then I've noticed more and more people are buying these to build their PFSense uh, router slash firewall or uh, other type of network appliance. Which is really well suited for these machines. They're very energy efficient. They have a uh, PCI slot that allows you to add a quad port uh, network card and so these are really great machines uh, for building a network appliance. Now in front of you here are three uh, HP T T620 Plus machines that on the surface of things look completely identical but they're actually not and so this video is really to uh, share with you uh, some of the subtle differences of these machines so that when you're going shopping for your T620 Plus you'll know what to look out for. All right, let me start with the two machines here. Let me put this guy aside for a second and kind of walk you through these two guys. So uh, the front of these machines pretty much look exactly the same all uh, across the board. Okay, so and the front and the sides are all the same. And here is the back. Now, one immediate difference you're going to notice between these two machines is that this is missing the rear uh, back plate. Okay, now that's purely a cosmetic difference. Uh, there is no uh, function with this back plate. It's just to kind of make it look consistent with the rest, rest of the case. However, that said, a lot of these machines are being sold, uh, you know, on the used market on eBay and, and other places, uh, and they're coming without the back plate. So somehow the back plate gets lost a lot of times. And so don't assume that, you know, most of the time you're going to end up with one with a backplate. It's very likely that you'll find uh, a machine that it has a missing backplate. So if that matters to you, make sure to ask the seller, you know, does the machine that they're selling uh, include the backplate? Okay. And I actually uh, like this backplate. It does make it look much nicer and consistent with the rest of the case. It's also got nice uh, labels to, you know, uh, just indicate what kind of port is there. And so, uh, anyway, that's something to look out for. Now, other than the missing backplate, so let me just kind of take the backplate off of this machine, um, just so we'll, um, one second here. All right. Okay, so now that I've taken the backplate off of this other machine, they pretty much look identical, right? So all the ports are pretty much exactly the same, uh, but here's the thing these are actually not identical machines. And I'll show you what the difference is and we have to look inside to figure that out. All right, so let me go ahead and remove the, the top cover and show you how these machines are different. All right, if I can get this cover off. Okay, so, so far still look, looking the same. Let's go ahead and open up the fan shroud. Okay, and so now, if you're looking carefully, uh, you might notice a difference. But let me make it a little bit easier by removing the network card so we have a unobstructed view of the system board. Okay, so now I think you can uh, see the difference, and that is right here and here. All right, this is the M SATA port, and this version has an M SATA port, while this version does not. And if you take a closer look uh, on the motherboard right here, hopefully you guys can see that, it says Rev B. Whereas on this board that does have the M SATA port, if you take a close look, it says Jamestown Rev A. All right, so these two machines, although look completely identical from the outside, uh, have a feature difference, the M SATA port that is, uh, because there's a different revision of the motherboard. Okay, so the Rev A, which I presume is the older revision, included the M SATA port, whereas the newer uh, Rev B version does not. So if that Rev, uh, sorry, if that uh, M SATA port matters to you because you're planning to use it. You maybe uh, saw that in my previous video because 
in that video when I showed you the insides of uh, the T620 Plus, I was using a Rev A machine, and so um, there was a M SATA port in there. If you were planning to use that M SATA port, make sure that you're getting a Rev A system board with this your T620 Plus. There are a lot of Rev Bs out there, and so if you get one of the Rev Bs, you're not going to have that M SATA port. So that's one key difference that uh, is harder to identify because a lot of times um, sellers will not post a detailed photo of the internals open like this. So you're going to have to ask specifically in order to see what type of motherboard is in there. All right. So that's one uh, subtle difference that um, really I think is going to just require that you ask the seller to verify and confirm what revision motherboard is included in the machine. All right, so let me put this guy aside. Now, this machine and this machine, let me move this aside here. Um, this also has a, a rear back plate, so let me just go ahead and remove that for now, since we're just kind of taking a look here. All right, so these two machines look very similar. And uh, I already know that this has a Rev B motherboard, okay? So these two machines both have Rev B motherboards. So you would think like they're completely identical, right? But they're not. And I think, let me just kind of stand these guys up next to each other so you can kind of take a close look. So one thing you'll notice looking at the rear ports of this machine is that these two ports are not the same. This machine has two serial ports, a printer port and the rest are identical. This machine has a VGA port out here. Okay, so other than the display port, you know, these come standard with two display ports. Other than the display port, there are uh, T620 plus machines that come with a VGA port, okay? And this is something you can tell if there is a picture of the rear, um, you know, rear ports. You can kind of look at this and, and, and see whether this is a VGA port or a serial port. Now, if we look at the internals, okay, if you look at this machine, let me hold this up here. So you'll notice this serial port is this ribbon cable, and it's plugged into the header um, kind of like almost in the middle of the board here. And that's for the serial port. But down here is another header, and this is for the VGA port. So if we look in this other machine here, I'll go ahead and open that guy up, you will see that the VGA port is plugged into this VGA header. All right, so. Um, so that is an official option that was available for these T620s. Now that said, the VGA port option I've have found is uh, pretty rare. Uh, I don't see it very often. And obviously, you know, I have one machine here and, and a few others that have this VGA port. It is also possible to buy this cable uh, and adapter, the VGA adapter, and just, you know, replace this yourself. Um, you know, I, I don't, I haven't seen them for sale individually, but uh, I know that there is a part number here that, you know, I'll, that was available for uh, purchase, uh, you know, afterwards to, to swap this out, to, to uh, swap out that serial port for a VGA port. So, you know, if you already have one of these machines and, you, and you're like, oh man, I wish I, I had the VGA port, you know, um, you can try to find the part number for that and, and replace it yourself. So that's one way to get that. But this is kind of nice if, if you, um, plan to use this machine, uh, let's say like in a, in a rack, you know, you're placing this perhaps on a shelf or something like that. A, a lot of, uh, KVM systems, um, in, in, in a rack use a VGA port. So this would be very convenient where the, you know, display port might not be as useful in a situation like that. Right. So anyway, so that's, uh, another subtle difference to, to look for when you're shopping for these machines. Now, let me go ahead and, uh, close these guys up. All right, so those are some of the differences you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for when you're shopping for the T620 Plus. Now, one other thing is that 
you'll see that I have these machines oriented in vertical position. And they're meant to be mounted uh, or, or I guess placed either in orient a vertical orientation or uh, in a horizontal orientation. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these machines is that they're designed to be very uh, energy efficient and part of that is, you know, uh, very uh, well-designed cooling. And so you'll notice this machine is pretty much ventilated on all sides uh, other than the front and the back. And so uh, the bottom has ventilation holes to uh, take in cold air. The side has ventilation holes taking cold air. Okay, and also this side is completely ventilated, taking cold air. And there's an internal fan, as you saw earlier, that takes uh, the the air as it's warming up and pushes it out the top side. Okay, so it's meant to be oriented like this. Now, obviously, when you place it down on a flat surface like this, it completely blocks the the ventilation holes on the bottom, right? And so these are actually uh, originally when they were brand new came with a stand that helped solve that problem. And so the stand looks like this. It's a little square piece of plastic with two screws. And you can attach this stand to the bottom of uh, this machine by lining up the screws and just kind of threading these guys in. Okay. Oh, that one's not lining up right here. Let's see, where's the, oh, I think. Yep, you just screw these guys on. Um, doesn't have to be very tight. I would just say finger tight is good enough. And so this stand um, makes it a little bit more stable. So, you know, there's less chance of it flipping over if uh, something were to knock this from the side a little bit. But it also uh, improves the uh, cold air intake because it leaves a gap right here. And so cold air can enter this machine uh, through the gap right here and uh, assist with the cooling of this machine and hence keeping the, the fan uh, slow so it doesn't make a lot of noise and to keep your processors and other components uh, adequately cooled. So this stand is very useful uh, if you're planning to use this in the vertical orientation I would uh, certainly uh, say, you know, if you're trying, if you're buying one of these, look for uh, a listing uh, on eBay or wherever you're buying this from that already includes the stand. Now, unfortunately, a lot of times the stand gets lost and it's not included. And so, um, you know, a, a lot of listings will not include the stand. But if you find one that does include the stand, I'd say definitely get it. Okay. Now, this stand is not only just useful for when you're uh, planning to place this in the vertical position, it's actually useful also if you're planning to put this in the horizontal position. And so let me show you how that works. Let me go ahead and just remove this from the bottom. And you see this stand can also be attached to the side panel that has the HP logo. So let me just put this down flat and you'll see there are two screw holes right here that are meant for those screws. And so if you place this down um, on the side with the HP logo, you can screw this stand in, okay? And so now when you place this in the uh, horizontal position like this, okay, it leaves a little gap right here that allows cool air to enter this side panel as well so that the side panel's ventilation holes are not completely blocked out, okay? This is actually uh, a very nice design. Um, you'll notice that this part obviously is not ventilated and it's only here. Um, and this, this stand works uh, well, you know, in, in that, um, in, in the, for this particular design, okay? So if you're planning to uh, use this in the uh, horizontal position, I'd also recommend that you uh, get the stand, okay? So it's actually useful for both. Now that said, um, again, a lot of uh, these machines are sold without the stand, and the stand's actually kind of uh, a little hard to come by. They, they can be found, and, uh, and sometimes they're a little bit expensive. Um, I've seen these sold for about $25 a piece and, and I don't, I don't really think they're worth $25, but you know, if you really wanted the official stand, I mean, 
uh, hopefully get get a machine that already includes the stand but uh, if you have to get it afterwards you know they, they can cost you uh, a little bit here but it, it is a nice option now let's say you don't find one with a stand or you already purchased one of these machines and you didn't uh, you know uh, watch this video yet and so you didn't think to to look out for this to for the stand that comes with this and you've got a machine and you want to you know place it in the vertical orientation and you would would like to have something that would you know hold this up so that cool air can get in from the bottom side as well well um, you know I mean you could use little blocks or something like that to just kind of place this up but there is another solution and uh, unfortunately it does require you to uh, reach deep down into your soul and ask yourself a crucial question and that is you know are you willing to steal some Lego blocks from your kids okay because if you are get 34 pieces of these uh, two by four standard Lego blocks okay just like this and if you have uh, you'll need 17 uh, pieces per per side here uh, or per stand and so just build it like this um, you know and I, I built it too high here to kind of hold the sides and if you you know build two of these things okay so that's 17 pieces 17 blocks here 17 blocks here for a total of 34 blocks uh, if you're willing to steal Legos from your kids okay and I completely understand uh, if you're willing to do that because you know it's important to keep your firewalls uh, stood up correctly okay um, these actually fit just perfectly you'll notice that there is kind of this um, unventilated portion of, of the bottom and the 2x4 uh, standard Lego brick is just the perfect um, width for that okay so you'll see how it just fits perfectly right there okay it's, it's like it was meant for this okay so um, you can build yourself these Lego stands and um, and just place it right on there okay it it fits perfectly you know, let me show you kind of a front view you'll see it's it's perfect it's it's like it was really meant you know I, I think HP uh, designers had Legos in mind when they designed the uh, T620 and they made this you know exactly the width of uh, four Lego bricks okay this is like the, the the exact width of four Lego bricks and so that's another way for you to get yourself a stand for your HP T620 all right so anyway that's it uh, those are the things I would say uh, look out for when you're shopping for your uh, T620 uh, plus machine now that said uh, most of you guys already know I have a store uh, on eBay called the art of server and I actually have these machines for sale so if you'd like to get one from me and support me um, please check out my eBay store I will leave a link in the description to um, my listings for these uh, T620 machines and also if you're building anything else uh, like a storage server or media server and you need some uh, pre-flashed IT mode HBA cards for your free NAS or Unraid or anything similar to that um, I got plenty of those in my eBay store as well so check that out alright so uh, that's it for you guys and if you like this video please remember to click on like and if you'd like to see more videos from me uh, please click on subscribe. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.